Our guest in this segment is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, Ron Stevens. Ron, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. Come, come closer to your microphone now. <laughs> You're a little too relaxed. Good morning. <laughs> He's relaxed. He's like chilling out, sitting back, have a little Sit snack. Back. Now, I was listening to the conversation. That's yeah. a colorful tie, Ron. It's, Thank uh, you very much. You know, we talk I, about food so much on yeah. this show that I thought I'd wear a food tie. Oh, that is if you got french fries yes. on there. Yes. Got a hamburger down the bottom, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Make me hungry. Looking yeah. at that tie. You may not get out of here alive, Ron. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the weather's uh, caught you a little bit of break here with school days recently after a little tough run. It has. It has. What a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, injection of, of sunshine. And I am absolutely certain, being married to an elementary school teacher, I'm absolutely certain that they appreciate the weather to allow the students in the, um, in the elementary grades to be able to get outside. You got to run so, off some of that energy, man. Absolutely. 100 days of school. 100 days of school have passed, so uh, yeah, we're well on our way. Well yeah. on our way. We tend to, we enjoy complaining about the weather here, but you look across the country, especially the southwest uh, right now and yeah. northeast. And, yeah, California, northeast. Uh, we These other parts of the country have had severe weather the last couple of so years. We have not. We've been very That is fortunate. true. That is true. In uh, Jefferson County, they recently had a uh, every superintendent's nightmare experience with a teacher who had been guilty of an offense in another state and uh, somehow got hired in their county. And uh, once the information was discovered, that teacher was quickly uh, apprehended, removed, and, yeah. and such. Uh, what precautions do you take in Berkeley County, Ron, to make sure when you hire somebody that it is not a fugitive from a, a, a law situation? Well, that is, um, you know, there's, there's, there are background checks. At, How extensive, at each, Ron? How extensive? Uh, well, it, it, it depends on which level yeah. we're talking about. Initial certification, there's a, there's a federal background check. Uh, it's very thorough. Um, you know, fingerprints. I mean, the whole, the whole, uh, nine yards once that background check has been done and you have an employee that works uh, uh, let's say works in your school district uh, or in your state um, you know you rely on the uh, checks from the local or from the local law enforcement agencies but also from the state um, state police um, in this case I believe there was um, you know an added piece in there where the the student or the uh, teacher had had passed all of those uh, background checks, then relocated out of state, yeah. came he, back while their license was still good here. So there was not a requirement for um, a federal background check, and um, the offenses that occurred were outside of our state. So our state police, when the back the state police did the background check, they didn't show up. So I uh, so that's the way I understand yeah, it. Okay. I'm I'm not a that's Certainly not in, you know, wasn't in Berkeley County, so I don't have in-depth knowledge about that. So he he had uh, undergone all the testing earlier while a state resident then went to Georgia, and that's where the uh, the problem happened. He came back to the state. He did not have to go through the same background checks again. That's the way I understand okay. it. Yeah. Um, again, that's it wasn't in our county, so I I don't know that it, those yeah. all of those actually took place the way that they were supposed to yeah. but it is um that it, here when i follow through with our hr department to just to make sure what is our policy and what would we do if something like that happened um that that was the description it was given to to me that initial certification uh leads to um the federal background check a thorough yeah, uh, background checks for some of your higher clearances uh, are are very, very, very extensive, requiring a lot of money. I just wonder what the school systems do, trying to find that compromise that you do a kind of a not a casual but not an in-depth check. Well, it's you know it's one of our built-in uh, expenses that we yeah. we need to uh, you know and safety of of our children safety of our people um our community is of course our the utmost of importance to Certainly. us so um you know that's just a, an expense that we incur is that something that could occur in berkeley county ron or what precautions are in place so that it wouldn't well again that was that was part of uh my intent for having that discussion with our hr department was you know how how do we avoid uh 
mm-hmm. things like this. And, um, you know, there, there is that, that small loophole. Now they, they it's my understanding that they would still have to have their license here. It would have to be everything. All of the initial background check would have had to have been done. They would have to actually move away, reside somewhere else, have the offense take place there and then move back. Um, so there's, there's a lot of loopholes in there for that. And mm-hmm. the, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, just what are we going to do if we have an employee that um, meets that criteria? We may have to ask a few extra questions now. Is there anything that the legislature can do in terms of passing a law or providing some type of, uh, no, of, of way of closing a loophole? Well, this, uh, this is pretty new. Um, and I have, I really haven't been able to ask in great detail about mm-hmm. that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we'll be approaching, um, you know, our legislators in the, um, you know, in the, in the coming months to try to help us with that. So, um, we got to figure out how that happens first of all, before we can ask for any help. Well, it's an easy thing to say, but it's a very significant thing to achieve, to implement uh, a, a background check that's going to be thorough enough that would catch a lot of these individuals. You can have a, a background check that's going to be kind of casual. You'll pick up a lot of the obvious points. But, again, it's not a trivial process you're asking the uh, school systems to undertake. You know, r- really, I think it's it's a two-way street. I, um, we've got to find a way when something like that happens that the information is is sent to us you know we're not going to be able to identify the thousands of employees that we have now and that are going to turn over in the next few years it's going to be very difficult for us to do individual checks on every single one of those so there's we're discussing how can that how can that be tightened up? How you know, if if Rob works for Berkeley County Schools and and something happens, how do we get that information? And how can it be? Um, is there something that could be provided to us from law enforcement, um, from other agencies? So there, it's we're in the very beginning of the discussion. And again, this unfortunately it happened in West Virginia to a, a, one of our neighbors. Um, and we're just discussing things right now, trying to figure out what what would we be able to do to to prevent it. How many how many new teachers do you bring in every year, Ron? Well, um, you know our our substitute list is replenished each year. We have perm subs that that come in and, and take positions. The, our our turnover is usually a couple hundred people, and uh, then you have new positions that come in. So I, I would say that we're probably close to 300 new employees uh you said teachers but i'd say 300 new employees probably across the board so 300 background checks of any in depth is a significant significant uh, yeah and and many of those are from neighboring districts um who have have those background checks um some are not you know we're we're in a part of the state that we you know we border two states we're close to uh, the District of Columbia and, you know, Pennsylvania as well. And, you know, it's it's about communication between their education system, their law enforcement agencies, and ours. And I'm guessing that uh, upon um, hiring or there's an application process as well, whether it be written or online or what have you, that asks that question have you ever been convicted of a and you rely on folks to be truthful and um upfront but mm -hmm, we know how that goes sometimes too right (laughs) yeah i i I can never remember the joke but there was always a joke uh you know there was a um a group of of two groups of people one uh lie all the time and one tell the truth all the time and how do you tell the difference I, I can never remember all the details in that, but I feel like I'm wrapped up in that. You know, um, you're exactly right. There is a there is a caveat on on contracts that that state that, and you know, basically, if we catch people that are not being truthful, that adds teeth for us. 
it it doesn't necessarily mean that we absolutely trust what they're saying. We still do our due diligence, sure. um, but if they mark that down and it is not true, then that's that's grounds for dismissal. It, the flip side is you fo- the fact that this incident made statewide headlines uh, is a testament to how successful you folks are or have been because we do not find many of these instances. Well, um, you're you're right. Across the state of West Virginia as a whole, there's you know we we deal with uh, um, in in every career in every. In every uh, career that's out there, uh, every job, but in education specifically, since we're talking about that, there's there's such a turnover rate. I told you how many we have on a yearly basis. Um, you know, it, it creeps up into the thousands across the state. Um, you know, we have new people coming in from states all over the place and other countries. And, um, you know, this, this is something that I think that we're going to have to focus on in the future and the, and the conversation we've started the conversation um and hopefully we'll be able to come up you know head things off and be proactive ron let me shift gears uh we've talked about school discipline quite mm-hmm. a bit over the last several months uh senator grady uh who's in charge of the education committee in the uh, in the senate has introduced a a new bill that that addresses discipline in effect it allows the teachers to take a student out an unruly student out of class uh have, are you familiar with that bill have you had a chance i, I am familiar it? with that bill I, and I, we were just talking about that at the yeah. break um and i believe it's uh senate bill 614 okay. is the one that specifically um i was i was looking at don't hold me to those numbers it is correct um oh good 614 good. um you know, I, I think that our legislators and our, our communities are, are trying to help um, our teachers and uh, and those people that are on buses and in classrooms as um, assistants and in offices, uh, um, our counselors. I, I really believe that they're they're trying to help. I, uh, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I'm concerned that some of these, as, as I read through them, you know, on my end of it, as a former principal, as a former teacher, um, sometimes we're 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 talking about things that may require some additional work or some additional things on the side. And you know, I just hope that the people that are sponsoring these, that are that are excited about these, that are talking to people that are in the education field, to give them some feedback on that. I have not talked to anybody about yeah. this particular bill. Uh, as I read through it, um, my concern would be. Uh, that it possibly could um, rely on additional personnel, additional support services, additional resources. Um, and I did not see uh, a place for finance, uh, for providing funding for that. Yeah. Uh, um, Senator Grady, for the ones that do not know, has, has been a teacher for, I think, 20 years, still is an active teacher. Uh, so she brings the uh, firsthand knowledge to the problem. That's uh, that's fantastic. Um, I have not met Senator Grady, but, yeah. um, you know, that, that certainly is a step in the right direction. And I can tell by the way that it was worded when I read through it that um, it's someone that's passionate about that. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely not against that. I'm always wondering how we're going to fund it, how we're going to implement it, and those are the things that. Uh, I was I was just yeah. going to say the wording used to be unfunded mandates. Yeah. You have to do this. <laughs> but Makes me cringe when you say that. I know, that. but we're not. <laughs> yeah, we haven't used those words for a while. But, I, I know, um, I know, and there's uh, the intent is good. I, I I'm not here to 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 say that I disagree with with uh, with that bill. Um, with that bill bill yeah but, um, <laughs> that kind of brings a lot my, of bills we, we had uh jackie long's son uh on a couple of months ago and the approach that some of the schools are doing if mm-hmm. there is a disciplinary problem mm-hmm. then they go to a special school or with special instructors right. uh, how is that working to me the concept uh, <laughs> is very attractive well we're, we're we're running a pilot program in um in in Berkeley County and I say pilot because this is really our first year with it and we're trying to work out some details uh, the design we're not sure that we're just going to be able to open the doors up and say you know 
you have a disruptive kid, send them to me. You have a disruptive kid, send them to me. What we're looking for are those students, you know, with a special niche that uh, we're we're checking them to see if there's additional services that need to need to be in place for that student. Um, you know, so there's it, there's a tier program that we're required to to go through with students as we're evaluating their behaviors and and their educational needs. And I think that this allows some people that are sp specialized in that um, to have some um, time with students in an environment where it's a little bit uh, less. Uh, the student teacher ratio is is smaller, so it gives them an opportunity to focus a little bit more on those students. Uh, they spend some time with them, come up with some things that work, um, and it, it are able to hopefully transition them back into their home schools with some ideas that may benefit the student and the teacher uh, at their home school. So I, I think that it's a very good thing. And you know, again, we just started it this year. We're a semester in, and um, you know, I don't I don't have a lot of patience, but I try to sit back and uh, wait for wait for some things to happen. I think that we've got uh, two different levels. We've got a, a K-2 classroom. We have a 3-5 classroom for the intermediate uh, schools. And we have students that have been served in both of those. We have students that have actually graduated from those programs. We're calling it graduated so that they can uh, um, transition back into their schools. We've had students who have transitioned back and had great success and we've had some students that have transitioned back and, and are, we're still struggling. Uh, and we'll, we'll not give up on them and we'll continue to work with those. But I, I, I think the CARES Academy, again, comes from a good place. And we're, we're going to have to work to uh, make sure that it fits Berkeley County and our students uh, as best as possible. Ron Stevens is our guest. Yeah. He is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County. What other legislation are you watching that's coming through the Education Committee in the Capitol? You know, there's there are so many uh, that are out there. And I, I cringed a moment ago when one of our colleagues said <laughs> unfunded mandates. Um, so I really, uh, you know, it's 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 time for us to start talking about our budget. It's time for us to start talking about staffing and, and we're already planning for the next next year and the years after that. So right now, there are a number of things out there that um, excite different areas of our of our school uh, school system. I'm mainly focused on some areas that may uh, affect the bottom dollar. So I'm you know very interested in the um, um, how we can put some value back into the sick leave for our employees that seems to have support this year uh it seems to have some support and uh, you know again i i am i overanalyze things when it comes to mathematics i i absolutely know that so i'll be uh, you know sitting around and catch myself thinking okay if we have this many that that receive that how much uh is that going to cost the county where does that money come from are we going to receive enough support to do that you know berkeley county is growing and we are outside the school formula you know the funding formula so um just because of the the needs in our county and the growth that, that we're experiencing and the uh, um the rise in the number of special needs students for berkeley county i don't expect us to be able to be in formula although i don't think there is a county that is what do you mean by outside formula? Uh, it, what i mean outside the funding formula they receive um, funding for positions um and that is something that the state provides um, a certain number of positions are funded each year. It, professional positions and service positions. So you're saying we have more positions. We have more, that... We have a need for more people mm -hmm. than our funding formula actually would dictate. Um, so uh, then that's funded totally so that through is, local dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, thank you for saying is that. That, that, that is exactly right. The excess levy covers those. The excess things? levy, gener our um, our general operating budget. Um, you know, other programs we have to manage to, to be aware that we're uh, we're going to be incurring some of those expenses. So, yeah. Yeah. The uh, banking of sick leave, they return the system to the way it used to be, where you could bank your mm -hmm. sick leave and you can, there's all sorts of possibilities with mm -hmm. that then. You mentioned that that could also be a strain on your budget going forward. Well, there, if, if, I, if nothing has changed and I read it correctly, there's, there's an option for a payout. Mm-hmm. 
for you know for employees to put a value back on that leave if they're not going to be able to turn that in uh, they're not going to be able to do it like it used to be people were talking about um, taking their sick leave you know my, my father's a retired educator and he has sick leave that he was able to turn into um, benefits in retirement you know his, your health care health care and my mother-in-law did that as well and that is um I don't believe that's part of it. Uh, I think they're talking about being able to maybe use that as years of experience. Um, but the part that I'm talking about is if you're, I believe that was if you're, you could cash in up to 10 of those uh, unused sick leave days f for money. And again, where's that money coming from? And I'm, you know, I'm not familiar enough if there have been updates on that, but those are the things that I start to think about. The, it, the federal government had this problem several years or so ago, and they found that folks retiring had several, several hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. owed to them, and that on a school budget, that would put a mm -hmm. tremendous strain on, on the budget. Well, again, I think it comes from a great place, and yeah. I think that it puts the value back on um, someone's someone's leave if if you don't if you're awarded a certain number of sick leave days during the year and you don't get anything for them you can't cash them in when you retire you can't cash them in at the end of the year um, what's to prevent you from using those and I think the goal is for us to have the, you know the highest quality highest trained person in front of our students on a regular basis whether it be on a bus uh, or in a classroom and uh, I think that putting a value on attendance is what they're trying to do and and, and by doing so they created a substitute yeah. teacher nightmare for the and, schools and, yes and what I'm thinking of is what are you actually incentivizing there you yes. know do you come when you're sick so you can save those days or do you use all of your day i mean it's just yes. a problem it, it yeah. is it is a problem and you know it's it the sword cuts both ways mm -hmm. so to speak for that and you know yes it is incentivizing people to come when they're sick but it's also incentivizing uh people to come instead of taking that long weekend uh, that that wonderful sunny day in the spring when we have 400 absences uh from employees um, Adults do that too. I thought just the kids called <laughs> off on the nice days. Uh, yes, uh, we, that and that leads to uh, substitute problems: transportation with our buses, uh, in the classroom with our teachers, in the kitchens with our cooks, uh, in the offices. I mean, a, a, across the board. So, I think that it's coming from a good place. We're trying to incentivize the right things, and you know, we, we're just going to keep trying until we get one that works i think but my concern is of course the, the payout if if we have um you know a quarter of our employees that are taking advantage of this i mean you're talking about um 750 almost a thousand times uh, a daily rate you know, that, that adds up quickly, well, and you're in the millions. Ron, when you set your budget, do you not have to account for those sick days at the beginning of the budget year? Well, we account for uh, a, a substitute budget. Um, those, those sick days, if, if you take a sick day, mm -hmm. we're st that's part of your salary. We're still paying you that, that salary. But if you're absent, then we have to ingest – into the system a, a substitute teacher that we have to pay for so that's that's the money so the goal would be to pay less in substitute costs um and to be able to recoup that but i'm not sure that, that we'll be able to recoup enough we have about a minute and a half left mm -hmm. do you have some shout outs you want to well, do or did you want to address some additional uh legislation i i have plenty of shout outs i always do and i uh, just want to make sure that you know give uh, attention where it's due first of all um our, our 20 keep your eyes open the 2425 calendar has been approved at the at the county level uh it's been submitted to the state i uh, expect that that will be viewed and feedback will be given on that sometime in the spring but should be coming out soon um it is school counselor week we have um 
some interviews that are, are pretty good from five of our counselors that are on our social media site. So um, ch check, check those out if you get a chance to. It's also uh, next week is Service Personnel Week. We're going to be celebrating all the, uh, all the positions. We're highlighting uh, secretaries, cooks, kitchen managers, custodians, uh, maintenance workers, aides, a variety of different people like that. And uh, Thursday is specifically Bus Driver Appreciation Day, so mm. that's that's a good thing. February 15th is School Resource Officer Day. Um, while I would caution you about coming up behind a resource officer and giving them a hug, <laughs> you may want to approach them and say thank you. I do want to say that our um, regular I regularly meet with our student advisory. I have a, I have a superintendent student advisory with representatives from the from the four high schools uh, and our meeting is this Friday. We have parent teacher conferences this week. We're excited about February 16th is an early dismissal and I always try to get those in on the radio for those of you that are listening to be prepared for that. And I would be remiss without uh, bringing uh, to light the fact that it is Black History Month. There are a number of activities going on across the district and I encourage everyone to check your, your children's schools websites, check with the schools to see what activities are going on. There's a, um, a reading across the, the county with secondary level students reading to elementary uh, level students with a common theme book, which is um, exciting. And uh, we're going to be celebrating with uh, Sumner Raymer School's history on uh, February the 17th at the Apollo Civic Theater at 2 o'clock. Documentary film. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, Berkeley County students are going to serve as ushers. They served as interviewers for some of the um, actual uh, content of that. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And last but not least, uh, as we get closer to the end of, uh, uh, of the month, on February 21st, our federal programs and equity and inclusion group are, are uh, going together with Martinsburg High School students and South Middle School students and sponsoring a multicultural family night uh, that's going to be held at South Middle School. So a mouthful, had a lot of things going on. Um, a lot of stuff you know, there. Good a stuff. A lot of positive things going on out there. I'm really excited about it. And parents, if you have boys, especially young ones, check their backpacks. Don't wait until the end of the school year because if you do, you'll find a homework assignment that was due in September. <laughs> <laughs> or a banana. Speaking from experience. A, Even worse would be I a banana, a, you're right. Yeah, I have a, a <laughs> bananas, personal experience. They can get oily once they break down, can't they? Oh. Ron, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I Thanks, really Ron. appreciate it. Good to see you again. Thank you to uh, Carla Trotman for helping to set that up through the school system with us. For Ron Stevens, superintendent of schools in Berkeley County.